How far are you willing to sacrifice for the one that you love? Let me tell you the story of Sadu Matsuzaka, a high schooler with a yander personality, who will eliminate all that gets in the way of her love. Sadu is a pretty and cute girl, and guys always hit on her, asking her to go on dates hoping to get a taste of her peaches. But she always refuses, since she is already in love with someone else. Sadu has a co-worker, Shuko Hida, who considers her a good friend, since they always hang out with boys, and come to work together. While dressing for work, Shuko asks her if she would hang out with guys after work, but Sadu tells her she will no longer do such a thing, since she already lives with the person she loves. Shuko believes she is keeping a man and teases her about spoiling her boyfriend. Later that night, it is revealed that the person she is in love with is a young girl named Shio. Shio is a sweet, loving girl who always gives Sadu hugs and kisses. For Sadu, this is the first time she has felt true love. She found Shio a few days ago and decided to take care of her, not expecting to feel this newfound feeling. Unlike all her previous partners, Shio loves her genuinely without expecting anything in return. Therefore, she vows to stay with her forever and protect her, but she needs to earn more now that there are two of them. So, she finds another job as a waitress. Her manager introduces her, and everyone immediately likes her because of her charming personality. Moments later, her handsome but simp co-worker Mitsuboshi Teyu confesses that he likes her, but she quickly rejects him, given that her heart belongs to Shio. Her co-workers have seen the confession, and they tease Sadu for rejecting Teyo despite being handsome. Sadu charms them that they are also cute, making them blush and like Sadu even more. But one person is not happy with it, their manager. Work is over, and everyone heads home when she sees Taeyu and their manager secretly enter the office. After that night, they notice that Taeyu has stopped coming to work. A few days later, their manager asks Sadu for overtime due to a staff shortage and blames her for what happened to Taeyu because she rejected him. Things went on like that for days, and she couldn't take care of Shio properly. One night, Sadu realizes that if something like this keeps happening, she will go crazy and might kill whoever is responsible. The following day, Sadu receives her salary, but it isn't enough from all of her overtime. She then asks her manager about it, but the manager gets mad and tells her that she had caused trouble, so her salary is cut. She is jealous of Sadu because she is likable to everyone at work. Aside from cutting her pay, she tells Sadu that their workplace is her kingdom of love and can do whatever she wants. As the words dig deeper, Sadu completely snaps and is furious as she remembers her past with adults. <laughs> Sadu reveals that she saw her taking Teo inside her office and can still smell the gross and evil act she did to him. She denies all the accusations, but Sadu threatens her that she will ask Teo directly and will expose her for her evil deeds while looking at the closet. The manager shows her true colors again and justifies what she did by teaching Teo's body what true love is and that she didn't do anything wrong. Not knowing that Sadu grabbed evidence by recording their conversations and plans to show it to every employee, which will damage the reputation she always works so hard to maintain. <laughs> Afterward, Sadu tells her that she doesn't care about her kingdom of love as long as she gives her what she owes. She then frees Teo in the closet and tells him to be careful around a woman who will do anything for love. While walking home, she feels upset and bitter about the incident but is relieved after seeing Shio, her one true love. Shio is her life, her reason to live, and no one can take that away from her. After putting Shio to sleep, Sadu explains that many people showed her all kinds of love all her life. But no matter what they do, she feels nothing. On the other hand, Shio is different and wants to learn more about love through her. She then enters a room full of bags with blood stains and mumbles her gratefulness to them for a beautiful house. In another place, a boy is looking for Shio and posts her pictures around the city. In the middle of the night, Sadu is holding a garbage bag she is trying to dispose of, but then she feels like someone is watching her, so she hesitates and runs back home. The next day, Sadu is in the middle of a conversation with her friends at school when suddenly, Mr. Kutamikawa, her teacher, calls her. The teacher asks about her academic situation and offers help if she needs anything, knowing that her parents are gone and she currently lives with her auntie. He then grabs her hand, which irritates her because she knows this is a form of physical advantage. 
Then she tells him she has quit fooling with boys and is in love with someone else. At work, Sadu shared that she has a stalker with Shoko, and they are peeking for people who might be it. They look at every customer inside the cafe and suspect the regular customer, who is also crazy about Sadu. After her shift, as she was heading home, she saw a reflection of a man following her. She then runs toward the dead-end alley to trap the stalker. That regular customer follows her, but to her surprise, it's not the customer but her teacher who shows up. With a crazy face, he compliments Sadu for being intelligent and unique from other girls he played with. Eventually, he requests her apartment, speaking about the pleasure he can give that will make her forget about other guys. Sadu finds the situation disgusting and feels like throwing up. However, she remained calm and walked with him. Soon after, she pulled the safety defense siren and alarmed people. He noticed the noise awakened the residents, so he walked away. Arriving at home, Sadu is not feeling well but was revived when Shio, the love of her life, kisses her. She promises not to let anyone get in her way of having the life she wants with Shio. The next day, Mr. Kutamikawa is bidding goodbye to his family when Sadu suddenly appears in front of his house. She greets them and pretends to ask about school while unbuttoning her uniform. Feeling terrorized, he suggests talking about it while walking. Sadu asks him why he hides his family and presents himself as a single man. The teacher responds by saying that having one girl doesn't satisfy him. He wants to have a relationship with many women and says it's his definition of love to have a harem. Once again, Sadu was triggered and had a flashback about the experience she had with an adult. A death stare suddenly occupies her face while pulling his necktie. Sadu tells him that he only wanted pleasure from women and the excitement of being discovered. She then kicks him, threatens him to report to his wife, tears his family apart, and informs the school to get expelled. Despite the terrible encounter, the awful teacher feels bad and good simultaneously. Before walking away, she requests him to remove the trash she couldn't get rid of, which he gladly accepts. On her way home, she sees the guy giving flyers and takes a picture of him. Back at home, Shio started to help Sadu by doing house chores. While resting, she fell asleep and dreamt about a woman. Sadu was already there when she opened her eyes. Sadu mentions the dangers outside, so she forbids Shio to go out. Sadu always thinks about her life with Shio and mumbles about their future despite knowing someone is looking for her. That same night, Mr. Kutamikawa disposed of all the trash by burning them. He looks nervous as he inhales its faint rotten smell but gets excited thinking about what is inside and says Satu is really different. The story continues when Teo Mitsuboshi, her former co-worker, is the new employee. Everyone welcomes Teo, but when they touch him, he shivers. Knowing what happened to him, Satu brings him to the break room, where he describes his trauma toward older women. She asks him if he will be okay working in the cafe where almost all employees are women. He tells her that someone made him realize that he must move on. Sadu is happy because she thought he had a girlfriend. But when she leaves the room, the dark side of the young man arises. Teo is looking and drooling over Shio's poster. It appears that Teo saw the boy posting flyers of Shio and immediately became obsessed with her. The next scene turns over to Shoko after their shift. She was passing by the park when she heard someone getting beaten in the bush, but instead of helping, she ran away. That person is the boy who is searching for Shio. Moments later, Teo unexpectedly came and helped the boy. He carries him into the cafe and sees Sadu leaving just in time, so he asks for assistance. They put him on a sofa and suggest calling the police, but the boy immediately stops them. The boy speaks about his disappointment with adults saying that they won't do anything and they are all the same. Teyu decides to inform the manager while Sadu looks after the boy. The boy murmurs a familiar vow that catches Sadu's attention. She realizes that those words are Shio's vows to her. She is shocked and falls to the ground, where she sees a crowbar. Looking evil because of jealousy, she plans to get rid of the boy once and for all, but then she hears footsteps. When Teo gets into the room, Sadu pretends as if nothing happens. At the same time, Shio is worrying because Sadu isn't home yet. She is overthinking that Sadu already abandons her. The little girl is reluctant to go outside as she realizes it is dangerous, but a ghost-like lady shows up and helps her. Back at the cafe, the boy also dreams about a woman who asks for help and calls him Asahi. Asahi Kobe, or the boy who posts flyers, is Shio's older brother, which is why he's looking for her. When Asahi gains consciousness, he stands up and opens the door to leave. Teyu and Sadu advise him to go to nearby hospitals and offer to escort him back home, but he refuses and apologizes for causing trouble. Walking home, Sadu is questioning the emotion she had earlier when she was about to hurt Asahi. From all the bitterness she had already experienced, she describes it as another level of negative feeling. 
She tells herself that she needs to understand it to control it so she can still live with Shio. Imagining that Asahi and Shio had said those vows to each other, she felt a bitter taste spreading in her mouth. Her mood quickly shifts after figuring out that it is the emotion of jealousy. She enjoys conceiving the pain since she learned it from her love for Shio, and pledges to do everything so the siblings never see each other. She is very excited to see Shio after a long day. Arriving at home, Shio is not at the door where she is waiting. Sadu is confused and searches the house but finds no trace of her. She is filled with emotions she has never felt before, and for every second Shio is not on her side. Her anxiety grows stronger and stronger, waiting to burst. Asahi also continues to look for her sister. He reminisces about the moments he held her in his arms and their dark past that still haunts him. On the other hand, Shio gets injured while looking for Sadu and starts getting dizzy when the panic gets in. Then the lady shows up again and gives her directions. She follows the lady's voice and bumps into the most unexpected person, Teo Mitsuboshi. Teo brings her to the bench and still can't believe he's holding Shio. He felt unpure and dirty. He believes that Shio, an innocent girl, can make him pure again. On the other hand, Shio is crying as she remembers someone who she used to comfort. Knowing she is missing, Teo offers her to stay in his house until he finds her family. Teo feels like he is in heaven until someone throws a big punch at him. It turns out that the bullies see him and decide to take revenge for bothering them earlier. Teo's blood splattered from the beating, provoking Shio to have a flashback. In her memory, the lady appears again and reveals her face. She was Shio's mother, and with a creepy eye, she scolded Shio for letting go of her hand and said she would never forgive her. Being scared, Shio shouted and then fainted. The bullies move their attention to Shio, thinking about reporting to the police to get a reward or calling Asahi and beating him once again. The two bullies carry Shio and try to wake her up, but a voice from the back catches their attention. Sadu, who has an idea and plays along with them. She pretends to hug the bully but then tases him. The other bully tried to attack her but got hit by a bag of tools. Sadu then took a knife and stabbed their eyes. Teo regains consciousness and witnesses Sadu carrying Shio. When Shio wakes up, she apologizes for going outside and breaking their promise. Shio explains she feared that she had left her. Sadu smiled and comforted her, assuring her they would always be together. She might be late sometimes, but she will always return to where Shio is. Night comes, and Shio is asleep. Sadu opens a drawer and grabs tools. The old jar she used to have in her childhood is still there, carrying her dark memories of when her auntie was hurt. But she doesn't complain about her situation since she considers it a form of love. The next morning, Sadu cooks Shio's favorite meal. She asks her if she talked to other people when she went outside. The little girl lies, but Sadu knows something is off. Before heading to school, she locks the new security device she installed last night and swears to protect her happy life with Shio. The next day, Mr. Kitamikawa is doing a background check on Sadu in the staff room. He calls her house daily, but no one picks it up. None of the teachers, including himself, met Sadu's auntie, so he suspected that she had killed her and put in the bag he had recently burned. He explains she is not an ordinary girl and will never forget how she scolded him. After that, she licks Sadu's photo, still not learning from his encounter with Sadu because it gives him more pleasure. At the cafe, Shoko tells Sadu they will be home early because of the violent crime near their shop. As she describes, the victim's eyes had both gouged out. Shoko also shared that she witnessed a fight at the park last night. Seeing that men are scary, then kiddingly asks Sadu to marry her. The scene jumps into Teo's house, where his room is filled with Shio's poster. Hiding under his blanket, he can't get over with Shio and remembers seeing Sadu in the park that night. Back at Sadu's apartment, Shio is inside the closet drawing on the wall and recalling Teo's words. She heard Sadu's voice and welcomed her home. After Shio falls asleep, Sadu enters the locked room and wipes the rough blood stain on the wall. But no matter how hard she tries, the blood won't come off. The scene ends with the image of a woman inside the cabinet, drawn by Shio. 